It's been a little while since my last Blu-ray and DVD update video, not including my Xmas haul, and so welcome to my January 2024 update. Let's begin with the Blu-ray starting off with a couple of films that really did surpass all expectations for me, and that is both of the A Quiet Place films, starring Emily Blunt and John Krasinski, and the sequel starring Killian Murphy, and both films were actually directed by Krasinski, affectionately Jim from The Office, to get that out of the way, but these films were honestly incredible for blending genres of both the horror and sci-fi and in terms of story it really does add a lot more to what your generic survival story would be with the added themes surrounding the Abbott family our primary focus where they communicate using sign language anyway because they have a deaf daughter Reagan played by Millicent Simmons and she was by far the best character in both movies certainly my favorite and I loved how she was able to discover something that would defeat the invading alien creatures and those are known as Death Angels, despite the fact that they go unnamed in both of these movies. And they fall to Earth and start picking off humanity for being audible, with the alien creatures being so susceptible to sound. And I loved those ideas, the t attention to detail in both of these movies, seeing the Abbott family survive by being silent, such as walking on sound, living in a soundproof bunker, and even having a plan in motion for having a baby during the apocalypse. I mean, I guess boredom strikes, but that is the last thing you would want to have, a wailing child. Kind of crazy, but overall, I loved the concepts in both of these movies. Very well done, very well put together, and I loved the behind-the-scenes on both of these uh, Blu-ray sets, especially for part two, where you really get into the mind of John Krasinski and the ideas that he had on set when putting together both of these films. And I'm very much looking forward to seeing what the future of this franchise will be like. So that is both of the A Quiet Place films. Next up we have Mission Impossible 7 Dead Reckoning Part 1, which this film was honestly one of my absolute favourites of last year, and is a film that honestly I didn't expect to be as good as it was, especially following up Fallout, and it's a huge debate for me as to which one I prefer out of those two movies. If they keep making Mission Impossible movies as good as this, I don't see any reason why they would have to bring these to a close. And they seem to really like outperforming the stunts from the previous, and this is no exception. The stunt work in this movie is incredible. Some great usage of both CGI and practical effects, since good old Tom Cruise loves doing his own stunts. Story-wise, it sounds a little bit goofy, but this time Ethan Hunt and his crew are going up against an AI villain, which I well, didn't really expect to be as good as it was in terms of presentation, but the way they slowly unfold the events of the movie to coincide with the reveal of the AI villain, I really enjoyed how that came to be, along with there being figures from Ethan Hunt's past coming back to haunt him, which I actually thought was tied to the previous movies. Sadly, that wasn't the case, but we may get some more reveals in in part two coming out, I believe, in 2025. I did not expect there to be such a wait in between movies, but I'm looking forward to revisiting this film closer to when the next film comes out. And this is definitely a movie I would recommend if you're a fan of the Mission Impossible franchise. Next up, we have a film by Christopher Nolan, which was arguably one of the most popular movies of 2023. Of course, being Oppenheimer, a film that on reflection, I genuinely do regret not seeing this in the cinema. For a three-hour feature, this did not feel like three hours. The time flew by, and I put that down to the very concise editing and the overall presentation being so well-paced, despite the fact that this movie movie does jump around in terms of a timeline exploring the life of physicist and father of the atomic bomb himself, J. Robert Oppenheimer, performed impeccably by Killian Murphy. Oh boy, uh, first question, do I have lipstick all over my nose? Uh, I'm just going to leave it. The entire cast was incredible in this movie. Particularly for me, I loved Matt Damon's character, who was very much a hard case at first, but somebody that became all the more invested, just like us as the viewer, in the experiments that Oppenheimer himself was performing, where you really do become invested in the scientific discoveries that led to the creation of the atomic bomb. Some of my personal favourite moments from this film were very kind of artsy in a way, where it deals with the moral implications of what the creation of 
the atomic bomb could really do for humanity in terms of wiping out hundreds of thousands of people and how Oppenheimer himself has that on his conscience and those scenes of seeing literally people turned to ash or people with melted faces that is something that is definitely going to stick with me and speaking of which the soundtrack to this movie is something that I've gone back and listened to a couple of times and it's something that I will definitely keep going back to just rekindling memories of this film overall I really did enjoy this if you're a fan of Christopher Nolan I'm sure you will very much appreciate this film and i definitely recommend grabbing the blu-ray for the bonus features that are included there's an extra disc full of really great behind the scenes stuff that will definitely enrich your interest in the history surrounding oppenheimer and the creation of this film so that is oppenheimer from Gareth Edwards, the director of Rogue One, A Star Wars Story, we have an original sci-fi film, The Creator. A movie that I feel has been very much slept on, literally nobody was talking about this movie when it came out. So much so, when myself and my friend went to go and see the movie, we were literally the only people in the screening, which was really surreal. But the movie itself has been heavily criticised for having a lot of very familiar story ideas which were focusing primarily on the elements of AI, a war between humans, an artificial intelligence, AI questioning itself, and an unlikely fatherly figure looking after a vulnerable child. And those story elements, albeit we've seen them in media as of late, such as with Star Wars, Mando and Grogu, The Last of Us with Joel and Ellie, I really liked how that was put forward in this film, and I really enjoyed the visuals in particular. That was definitely the strong point. That, along with the acting from Jonathan David Washington, playing an ex-Special Forces agent who was tasked with locating a weapon forged by the AI, which turns out to be a human-robot hybrid child with special powers and seeing the gifts that this child has that could be used for the benefit of the planet the child is to be protected at all costs overall i like the story for what it was if you're interested in unique science fiction stuff this might not be the best thing for you but if you're looking for an easy watch with some very pleasing visuals then i feel you will definitely enjoy this film and it'll be worth your time so that is the creator Next up we have a film that I've had in the collection for a little while, I've only recently gotten around to watching it, and that is Everything, Everywhere, All at Once. And this is the German Blu-ray release which does play in English with the relevant subtitles thankfully, and I don't believe this has even had a UK release which is kind of surprising. And the film itself, I'd heard incredible things about it, but honestly, I didn't really enjoy this as much as I thought I would. Perhaps it was overhyped for me, or maybe multiverse stories have lost their magic. I'll give it credit for its originality and its humour. Michelle Yao, who plays the main protagonist, Evelyn, she clearly had a lot of fun with this movie, and I really liked the ideas of her saving the multiverse by tapping into alternative versions of herself. But I found the story to be a bit of a drag considering the core of its sort of simplicity was surrounding family disagreement, not caring what other people think of you, the freedom of expression, etc. And I feel the cast overall really had a lot of fun with the premise of this film and the making of it. And I may revisit it later down the line to see whether or not my opinions have changed. But otherwise, I wasn't really a big fan of this film. So I'll keep it in the collection for now, but I don't expect this film to really stick around if I'm being honest. Next up we have Steelbook Editions of Seasons 1 and 2 of Star Wars The Mandalorian, which I've already reviewed Season 1, you can check that out on the channel. This includes all 8 episodes of the first season, and I was very impressed with the overall presentation, but the special features were definitely lacking in my opinion. But the show does still hold up, I loved the first two seasons of the show, and I'm hopeful that despite these being very overly expensive sets, if they do sell well, we should hopefully see more physical media from Disney, whether it be for Disney Plus Originals, or anything by Fox, etc. Maybe we'll even get the return of Family Guy, Simpsons, and future armor releases in the near future, who knows? But physical media releases well, for streaming shows, that's a huge win in my opinion. And the steelbook editions with the artwork done by Attila Saka, I'm a huge fan of the overall visuals when it comes to the steelbook releases. So there's season one and here is season two. 
again, very similar, includes all eight episodes. The bonus features are, again, a little bit meh, if I'm being honest, which sounds very ungrateful, but considering how much extra content is already out there in terms of the documentaries released onto Disney Plus about this series, you'd like to think they could have included those, but nonetheless, it's good to have the episodes and revisit this show on Blu-ray, so that is both seasons one and two of The Mandalorian. Last up for the Blu-rays, we have a couple of films that were very kindly sent over to me by my good friend Tim. Unfortunately, I've not had a chance to watch these as of yet, likewise with a couple of DVDs he sent over, but once I have checked them out, I'll be sure to feature them in a future update video. The first film he sent over is The Faculty, a film by Robert Rodriguez from the late 90s, which is a horror sci-fi film which has a very fun kind of premise to it with alien teachers in a school, apparently, so I'm very intrigued to check that one out. Next up we have a film by David Cronenberg, Crimes of the Future, with a very creepy cover art for this one. And then last up we have a very amusing looking horror film. This is Frogs from the early 70s. Who would have thought Frogs could be so terrifying? Yeah, I'm very intrigued to check this one out. For all the wrong reasons, this looks absolutely hilarious. And I do like how these releases by 88 Films usually have an alternative cover art. Anyway, that's going to do it for the Blu-rays, let's move on to the DVDs. Moving on to the DVDs, we have a selection of films that were very kindly sent over to me by my good friend Arvid, aka Junkmaster3. If you want to check out his channel, I'll put a link down below in the description. And he sent over a couple of films that he thought I would enjoy, and we also have a few more things to show off from Tim as well. The first film we have is Titan AE, which is an early 2000s animated feature essentially known for destroying Fox Animation Studios. And that was with production issues and just generally a lack of interest, which resulted in this film being a box office bomb. And over 20 years later, it does appear to have some kind of cult following, and I can see why. At the time, people would maybe dismiss this film, but I enjoyed it for what it was. The art style and the alien characters were the main draw for me, and the plot twists were quite fun. Otherwise, honestly, the only thing I didn't really like about this film, surprisingly, was the main character, Kale. I just found him to be extremely unlikable, and the villains were pretty ambiguous. They were very underutilized, and that was likely because they were CGI characters, and it likely would have been too expensive to include them budget-wise. But otherwise, I found this to be a decent film, but perhaps it's not for everybody. I'm going to speed through the rest of these since I've regrettably not had a chance to check these out as of yet. The first of which is an animated film by Rob Zombie, The Haunted World of El Super Bisto, which is an estranged comic book movie. Next up we have Subspecies, which is a triple feature DVD set. I believe there is also a fourth one, if memory serves, and these came out back in the 90s. Willard, which sounds like a really strange revenge story with rats, which has kind of caught my interest. Insanitarium, a horror film set in an insane asylum. Don't Go in the Woods, a great looking release, but this one has a very questionable rating online. Hell High, a late 80s horror film. And The Border, an early 80s crime film, which overall looks to be very interesting, starring of course Jack Nicholson. A couple more films kindly sent over by Tim, which always feel like a gamble whether or not the films are actually good or bad, whether he's pranking me from what it feels like. But he has reassured me that there are a couple of good films in this small stack. So we have Whatever Happened to Baby Jane, which is an early 60s horror film with a very cruel plot involving a girl tormenting her paraplegic sister. Don't Breathe, which was written and directed by Fede Alvarez, who did the, I believe, 2013 Evil Dead remake, if I'm remembering the year correctly. And I've heard very good things about this film. Piranha, which looks to be a strange kind of Jaws parody, and Almost Human, which looks to be an interesting blend of sci-fi and horror. Next up we have a film that I came across in a strange box of CDs which I actually unboxed on the channel and this film was burned onto a DVD-R disc and the quality was absolutely god-awful so I decided to go ahead and pick up the film itself on DVD and I'm very glad that I did. This is a very morally unsettling story about a young man given a second chance reintegrated into society from a prison sentence but does he deserve a second chance? And he was involved in the murder of a little girl when he was younger, and naturally with that in mind you would feel an immediate hatred towards someone for committing such a despicable act, 
But seeing things from the perspective of Jack, however, played by Andrew Garfield, he really gives himself to the performance, and you start to see things a lot differently where you pity someone who has committed such a horrible act. Overall, a fantastic British film, and I will definitely have to check out the source material of a novel that this is based on. Another enjoyable British film, this is Fish Tank, starring Katie Jarvis, following a young girl's struggles with a dysfunctional family dynamic as she tries to achieve her goal of becoming a dancer. And this film had a really weird plot involving the mum character's boyfriend, Connor, played by Michael Fassbender, who actually tries sleeping with Maya, the underaged main character. Overall, a very creepy section of the film that really adds a lot of uncomfortable feelings to the viewing experience. For sure, a gritty film, overall very well written and directed by Andrea Arnold. And if you enjoy a gritty British drama, and this is something that I would highly recommend. Next up we have New Waterford Girl, which was actually quite difficult to grab on DVD. I believe this set is now out of print, but this was an excellent coming-of-age film set in Canada following the character of Mooney, played by Leanne Balaban, and she dreams of pursuing a life beyond her hometown, feeling constrained by her overly protective family, and she becomes inspired by a new friend who moves into the village, and together they invent a false pregnancy story, where the pious family would then send her away to have the baby overseas, with this being a deceptive and overall very fun story, seeing a character that wouldn't necessarily rebel, usually become a rebel in her village. Overall, a very fun film that I really did enjoy. If you've seen my last Blu-ray and DVD update video, you'll note that there was a little bit of a struggle trying to get hold of The Blair Witch Project, which initially I was trying to get the Blu-ray copy of this film, and an eBay seller sent me the sequel instead, and then just completely ignored the fact that they made an error. I did luckily get a refund in the end, and actually got to keep the sequel, and the film that I really wanted was obviously the original film, The Blair Witch Project, and I luckily got this DVD copy very, very cheap. And it was great to revisit the film, I forgot how short this movie was, and I love this being obviously a found footage film and there being a lot of great setup towards the very beginning with a lot of foreshadowing as to what the end result will become and I like how the fear factor of this film is the fear of the unknown there's a lot of really fun elements to that and overall the film is very much a revolutionary piece of the time in a film that if you're into the horror stuff I would highly recommend if you've not seen it. Next up we have Prisoners from 2013 one of the most gripping films I've watched in a very long time and the director, whose name is debatable in terms of pronunciation, Dene Volner, I've been told it should be pronounced, we'll just call him Dennis Volvo. But this is a filmmaker that I've become all the more invested in, and after seeing Blade Runner 2049, this film stood out to me, along with Paul Dano playing a very notable role in this, a strange victim character in this story. And the plot revolves around two families who have their youngest daughters kidnapped. Paul Dano's character is a suspect, but the authorities do nothing about him. And so Keller, played by Hugh Jack, Jackman takes justice into his own hands, torturing Dano to near death. Some of the most uncomfortable scenes I have seen in a film in a very long time. But who is really the kidnapper? That is where Jalen Hall's character of Detective Loki comes in, who played an excellent role. And I loved the ending, which was somewhat leaning more so towards the story being left up to your imagination in terms of a conclusive end, which I really liked. Overall, a phenomenal thriller. Going from good to outright garbage, we have Barbarella, a very cheesy sci-fi film from the 1960s, and I checked out this film since it was referenced a couple of times in the Venture Brothers series, but the story was absolutely god-awful, a terrible manhunt story set across the galaxy. But despite the poor story, I did really enjoy the soundtrack, and Jane Fonda in her prime makes some good old eye candy for a couple of redeeming qualities, but this is not a film I would recommend by any stretch. Next up we have Indiana Jones and the Dial of Destiny, the final film in the franchise. And honestly, I kind of regret buying the DVD copy of this film because this is such a bare-bones release. It's a single-disc set, but it only includes the movie, no bonus features at all. They could have maybe added an extra disc with the bonus documentary stuff that was included on the Blu-ray, but I guess that would require effort. Speaking of which, the film itself just screams cash cow. Disney wanted to do something with the intellectual property of Indiana Jones. Harrison's still knocking around. Fuck it, let's just make Indy 5. 
Overall, ironically, the film itself was a financial flop, but at least it was better and more enjoyable than Crystal Skull, at least in my opinion. And I did enjoy the stuff set in the late 30s, early 40s. The deep fake indie actually looked pretty good, surprisingly, and story-wise, a Nazi enthusiast wants to use the Dial of Archimedes to time travel and take Hitler's place, winning the Second World War in favour of Germany. Overall, a very convoluted plot, and I really did enjoy Mads Mikkelsen's character, but I just feel this story isn't right for the Indiana Jones franchise. It was well acted, and it captured elements of the original films, but the ending just had me laughing in disbelief. Next up, we have a stop-motion classic from Ardman Animation, a childhood favourite of mine, of course, being Chicken Run. A movie that I've seen countless times, this film normally plays on television here in the UK around the holidays, but I've never actually owned this in the collection, and with the new film that came out over Netflix, Dawn of the Nugget, I thought it was about time I would have this one bought for the collection. And it was fun to revisit this film, looking at a load of chickens escaping a Yorkshire farmhouse, where egg-laying chickens are at the risk of being put to death, if not producing enough eggs. Loads of dark themes in this and I love the human characters, their designs are very quirky. Likewise with the sequel, despite the controversies replacing the original voice actors from this film, it was fun to see a high stakes operation saving chickens from an over the top prison. Plus, the reinvented and welcome return of Mrs. Tweedy as the main villain was phenomenal. The sequence where she walks down the spiral staircase is a very fun animated scene. And there's loads of great behind-the-scenes stuff all over YouTube about the sequel if you are interested. And the film was definitely a worthy successor to the iconic original. Next up we have Castle Season 8, the final season, which I love the overall premise for this show. It's very fun, light-hearted, loads of really engaging homicide mysteries, and the final season is no exception to that, but they really butchered the ending and really ruined what was seemingly a very interesting overarching story for the last couple of seasons of the show, and they ruined it with an overly complicated ending. The behind-the-scenes drama certainly did not help, and the shock value end scene, setting up a ninth season that never happened, was an overall blunder in my eyes, considering how when the show was announced as cancelled, they had to tack something onto the very end to make the last episode kinda make sense, when really it did nothing but ruin things in my eyes. I don't know, I may revisit this show one day, but I'll be skipping this final season overall. For the most part, a good season, but the last couple of episodes, the ending episode in particular, was very lackluster, and despite the dedication I've had to this show, I was left very underwhelmed by the final episode. A blast from the past, quite literally. Does anybody remember the original UK TV series of Primeval from the late 2000s? Well, this is the estranged Canadian spin-off, Primeval New World, which I've only seen a couple of episodes of this, and so far, it's okay. I feel as though if I'd watched this when I was younger, I would have maybe appreciated it a little bit more. This ran for just the one season, which is kind of disappointing, because you know the story really isn't going to go anywhere beyond, obviously, what we've already got. For the 13 episodes, and from what I have read, it does end on a bit of a cliffhanger, so again, this will be another unfulfilled story in the world of Primeval, but otherwise... It seems okay, the premise is relatively the same, with rips in time called anomalies occurring in the present day, and creatures from the past and the future pouring into the modern world where a team of misfits have to contain the creature incursions. Overall, some interesting stuff for what it is. This was surprisingly quite a rare DVD set to get hold of, I got lucky and grabbed this over eBay relatively cheap, and it's a 3 disc DVD set containing all the episodes of Primeval New World. A couple of South Park DVD sets, which I've done videos on both of these already. We have Season 26, which I really enjoyed. Six episodes overall. My personal favourite was the Worldwide Privacy Tour, satirising the difficulties, or difficulties, should I say, that Prince Harry and Meghan Markle have faced in the public eye. I really enjoyed that episode. And we have, of course, the Streaming Wars, which are two streaming movies put out onto DVD, ironically, which was okay. You can check out my review video is covering both of those in depth. A more obscure South Park DVD set, this is a Region 1 DVD from the USA, and that is The Hits Volume 1 
which is essentially a compilation disc with favorite episodes from the creators Trey Parker and Matt Stone. I don't believe I've shown this on the channel before, I do apologize if I have, but the main reason I wanted to pick this up was for the bonus feature, which I believe this is the only way you can get the original short film on disc, being The Spirit of Christmas, which was worth having in the collection, and this DVD set was relatively cheap, and if people are interested, I may make a video looking at the episodes solely on this DVD set in the near future, so that is South Park of the hits. Rounding off this update video, we have a couple more box sets of the animated television show Home Movies, which I discovered this series through my enjoyment of the animated show Metalocalypse, and Brendan Small behind that series was involved in this project, and this was a show that was highly recommended based off of my enjoyment of Metalocalypse, and I'm looking forward to starting it. I showed off season 2 in my last update video, which I grabbed very cheap, and I managed to locate season 1 and also season 4, which with this season, I was very surprised to see that it included an extra disc. So we have the three cases containing DVDs, but this one also contains a soundtrack CD, which was very unexpected, a great extra inclusion, which I very much appreciate. That's going to do it for my Blu-ray and DVD update video for January 2024. I hope you did enjoy. If you did, be sure to leave me a like down below. Let me know in the comments if you checked out any of the titles seen in this video. As always, I love hearing your thoughts and opinions. Let me know if there's anything you'd like to see an individual review video of. And for more content, be sure to subscribe to my YouTube channel, DVD Review Studios. Are you threatening me?